You're listening to the Out of Bounds Show, fueled by Fleetway Market. Whether you're on the road to the tailgate or headed up to hunting camp, stop by Fleetway Market to fuel up the car and the cooler today. WRKS Pickens Jackson. Are you ready? Now live from the Whiskey 61 Lounge inside the Bank Plus Studio. You are listening to Mississippi's number one sports talk show, The Out of Bounds Show with Bo Bounds. Streaming worldwide live on the Out of Bounds Radio app and on your radio at ESPN 105.9. The Soul. Oh, good morning. Welcome in. Out of bounds. 105.9 The Zone ESPN. Brought to you by the Bone-In Ribeye, Kessler Prime, and the Renaissance, KesslerPrime.com to make a reservation. We're streaming live on the Out of Bounds radio app. That's going to be your vehicle to win prizes for a while. Um, as we give away gift certificates and Four Roses bourbon merch and Tito's merch and uh, maybe a little Modelo merch, Out of Bounds, Y'all Lifestyle, all the other goodies that we have, autograph footballs and baseballs, jerseys, and so on. The Out of Bounds radio app. You can stream us there. Hit the podcast. Good morning. Welcome in. want to thank you for listening to 105.9 The Zone ESPN. You know that, you know, our station is driven by Mississippi sports, SEC football, the big, big stuff in the NFL, uh, Dak, Saints, QBs. And uh, we appreciate you, uh, you know, kind of making it your home on the dial and on the stream and on the podcast. Uh, We've had a great year. We're excited about 2022 and want to thank a lot more football left to be played. You know, regular season, conference championships, NFL goes all the way to February. I mean, at some point they may go to March. I'm okay with that. Takes us straight to March Madness and the NFL draft. So never a dull moment. And Blake, you told me that our podcast is up 106% compared to last October. That's right. That is correct. Okay. That's because of you. Thank you for going to Apple Podcasts. You're welcome. Oh, you didn't mean me? Well, you too. Okay. But I was talking to our <laughs> listeners. Uh, actually, you've done a good job with that. But uh, Frame it. our listeners, thank you. We're up 106%. That's called digital growth. You want it? Come and get it. Um, but we're up 106% on the podcast, October 2020, October 2021. We got the numbers. And, uh, you know, our numbers are accurate. We don't have to put any fluff in them. So thanks for going to Spotify, Podbean, Apple Podcasts, searching the Out of Bounds show. Thank you for going to Apple Podcasts and searching the Out of Bounds show, and we are up 106% on the pod. October 2020 to October 2021. Thank you. We'll have Steve Palazzolo on. Pro Football Focus, PFF.com. At 8.30, he'll join us on the Bell's Two-Hearted Ale guest line. Bell's Two-Hearted Ale guest line. And uh, Bell's Two-Hearted Ale is uh, one of the best, well, according to the people who judge, it is the number one American IPA in the country. Bell's Two-Hearted Ale. They've got it on tap at Salad Mookie's in Madison. Blake, did you see what happened here with uh, Mark Stoops? So, Mark Stoops is calling out SEC officials. It's been a rough year for everybody, but especially, you know, some years it's Ole Miss, some years it's Mississippi State, but Mississippi State with the Memphis game and MSU with the Arkansas game, I just think they, you know, those, those fans are fit to be tied. Uh, Mark Stoops was on some Kentucky Sports Talk Radio, and his quote was, I don't even know why I turn in plays anymore to the conference. It certainly doesn't matter. Accurate. So I don't know if he'll get fined because he's not, it's not post-game after a game where he's actually taking a shot at that officiating crew. Like if he's playing tennis, 
they just lost 45-42 to Tennessee. Different deal than on Saturday night if you're weighing in. But uh, his quote was, I don't even know why I turn in plays anymore. It certainly doesn't matter. Now, this is also Stoops who was, uh, his defense was calling out, what, cadence signals? Yes. Basically trying to get offensive line to jump offside. Yeah, all Ball throughout side. the game. And evidently, these officials who are right there in the middle of it wouldn't acknowledge it or didn't care or don't think it's a foul. I, I, I don't know. I don't, or a penalty, excuse me. Gosh, I'm already in basketball mode watching this college hoops on this TV over uh, Blake Mania's head. Anyway, a penalty. And, and that happened throughout the game. Yeah. And Will Rogers, who is a pretty... Will Rogers has a great demeanor on the field of understanding the ebb and flow of a game, and he is the number one person on the field, and everything goes through him, and he can't lose as you know what. And Will Rogers was pointing, walking up to the line of scrimmage and pointing to Kentucky defensive players during a game. Now, I think Will is vocal with his players, but he's not vocal towards defensive players. One, they could hit him. Two, he's got other things going on. He's got too much on his plate, literally play to play, just like any of our QBs. And yet they they didn't ever throw a flag in the Mississippi State-Kentucky game. And Will Rogers is coming. I mean, this is one of the smart. I mean, this young man is a super smart kid. His football IQ, because it's all he's ever known from his dad since he was six, is off the charts. He's pointing at Kentucky defensive players, Blake, and they couldn't throw one flag. Just to say, guys, stop. And then Mike Leach says, well, I guess we'll have to start practicing that. Isn't that what he said after yep. the game? Yep. Like, if they're going, if they're not going to call it, we'll just do it too. Yeah. I mean, it, it is, it's, how how many times have we stayed Ole Miss, Arkansas, it doesn't matter, pretty much every fan base except for Alabama. How many times have we been faced with that thing where it's like, yeah, were there plays that your team could have done to win? Sure. But, dead gummit how many times do we have to have how many times do we have to have an official blow a call that really matters in the game right and nothing ever gets done yeah there's never a but I, don't, I, don't, I don't i don't have a i don't have a solution yeah cuz i don't think the league care I, I think they care but they don't care enough to really do anything i in that is that i think that's 100% accurate. okay all right, let's 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 go to another. Uh, I thought we had some great audio here. Y'all know who Bruce Arians is, right? He coached at Mississippi State in 1981. Well, and again, under Jackie Sherrill in like 91. Anyway, he's the Super Bowl winning coach for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Odell Beckham Jr. is tied to the SEC. LSU player. He's a, he's a free agent. The media asked Bruce Arians if he would want to pick up OBJ. This is what he said. No, no. Too many letters. I already got AB. I don't need OBJ. Oh, that was pretty good. <laughs> too many letters. <laughs> uh, too many letters. I've already for our listeners. AB is Antonio Brown. Yeah, and that's who he was referencing. The wide receiver who Tom Brady likes. I've already got one headache. I don't need a second. That's right. So I've got AB. I don't need OBJ. Are you surprised that OBJ is still? Up for grabs in the free well, agent Well, it's market? what you, you, I mean, I'm heavy into the NFL, but you're way in. You said, what is really his value? Maybe he'll be shocked at what the market is actually telling him. You know what, Green because Bay? Because wide receivers are plentiful. And he's old. There's a plethora. I mean, <clears throat> there's, there. well, he's 29. He's a drama queen. And he's been inju- injury prone. And I think the NFL doesn't care as much as we do. Yeah. You know, we we think of OBJ as a flashy star, electric re- uh, receiver. When you get him in space, he'll embarrass you. I mean, when he gets in space and he gets open, he'll embarrass you. But maybe the market's telling him, "Hey, here's here's what you're worth, pal." Green Bay, we, got, we got plenty of other players just like you. Green Bay offered him the league minimum. The for li- I saw that. What was it? Seven and a half? Yeah, it's it's low. Okay. All right. Interesting. You didn't just drop this. Reminds me of 1986. Wow. You mean when MTV, when people actually watched MTV? Incredible. The Out of Bounds Show is brought to you by the great stakes at Kessel Prime. Kessel Prime in the Renaissance. 
tessaprime.com. Good morning. Welcome in. They've got a great selection of bourbon, including Four Roses bourbon. We're live in the Bank Plus studio, Palazzo at 830. You're listening to the Out of Bounds podcast brought to you by the premium cigars at Havana Smoke Shop in Jackson and on the Reservoir. Havana Smoke Shop for your premium cigars. I would say getting to Omaha is equivalent maybe to a sweet 16 in basketball. Maybe a ooh, shotgun fire. Maybe a round of 32. Good morning. Welcome in our Las Vegas discussion. Blake's going to Vegas for the first time. Las Vegas, baby. Bachelor party with 13 guys. Your recommendations are welcome on the Ag Up Equipment text line. 601 601- Eight eight five three seven seven six. Your recommendations are welcome. Yeah, you damn right. All right. Blake's Las Vegas trip is brought to you by the Men's Clinic in Madison. They offer uh, IVs for your immune system um, to get you back. Maybe if you've had a long weekend. Um, obviously, they have the low testosterone plan going to low T you can get a free blood test there and they'll walk you through a plan if you need one, but the men's clinic in Madison, the man thing.com and our Las Vegas discussion is brought to you by the men's clinic in Madison. Yeah, you damn right. Blake and uh, 12 other hooligans will uh, head out to Vegas, baby Vegas. And, um, one of the best movies ever with Vince Vaughn. Who was the other guy, the nerd in the, in the, or kind of the, the, you know, the other dude in the movie. I think he was the writer and director though. He's kind of the, huh, was it Matt Damon of Goodwill hunting? I mean, Affleck, obviously they're both stars, but, uh, that would be Ben Affleck. <laughs> not talking about the duck. Uh, you mean saving the downfall? <laughs> Why is he doing that during practice? Paul? Golly. Mm, mm, mm. Paul, Saban is cutting insurance commercials while our team is practicing. Roll Tide. Roll Tide, Paul. Roll Tide, Paul. That's what we do on Saturday nights. We, yeah, we roll tide. We roll hard. All over the living room. All right. Back to your Vegas trip. Were you oh. thinking of John Favreau? Yes. Is that how you say his name? Yes. Favreau? Okay. Yeah. That's who I was thinking about. Yeah, he's been in a lot of movies. That guy's a baller. I mean, he's very, very he's talented. He's quietly very. He, he also writes and produces a lot of the scripts. Which yeah, he's brilliant. Very, yeah. Brilliant. Uh, so, Swingers... Is that I, that's your go to favorite Vegas movie? Oh, I think it has to be for me. I mean, I, that was like that was when I was in college. I think ninety five ish, six ish, ninety six is when it released. Okay, yeah, when they dropped that and the whole Vegas baby Vegas, we should have some of those uh, drops. Um, Will I know you're new? We need to pull those. Up. I don't have them on my uh, on my computer, unfortunately, but. Um, We'll figure that out later. The point is, yes, Swingers. Is, have you watched Swingers? It's been a I, long I know you were five years old when it, time when it dropped. I watched it. And we, I have watched it, but it's been a while. It's not in my rotation. I need to get back, get it back in the rotation. Yeah. I don't really watch a ton of movies, though. Really? You're a movie guy. I watch a lot of sports and TV shows. I like the recurring time. I of, mean, I like series yeah. on Amazon and Netflix. That's, see, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a junkie for things that play out over the course of yeah. like a lot. I'll of, go back and yeah. forth. Yeah. I do watch more now that I have now that we have you know so Netflix easy. and Amazon. It's so easy, now. absolutely, yeah, absolutely. But you're right. I mean, w- there's a big chunk of the year where we're watching games, 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 games. I don't have time to watch a movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so you would say Swingers? I think definitely, obviously, like the modern movie for Vegas is The Hangover. That's like the number one thing I think modern people think. No of. question. No question. Yeah, I love casino. I know I love casino, and I love um, casino was good. Heat, 
Yeah, he's no, that a, wasn't in Vegas. Uh, but, I don't think. What's the other one? Casino, and then Although, there's a, there's another one with De Niro. And Pacino. Yeah, what's the other one with De Niro in Vegas? Not not Casino. What's the other one? God, what is that? Goodfellas. Called? No, I don't think so. Oh man, I'm going blank. You're not as focused as you need to be. You're thinking about Las Vegas. I, get I am. It. I love it. I'm all about it. Okay. I can't remember what the name of that movie is. Out of Bounds, 105.9 The Zone, ESPN. Should we ask that? Yeah. F- favorite Vegas movie on Dang, the text yeah. line? We'll give something else away. Give two things away. All right. So we've got the $50 gift certificate to Bravo Broad Street Salad Mookie's rolling. Uh, again, just show us that uh, you have the Out of Bounds radio app. And are we going to add to this? Yeah, let's do a different one. Let's do another giveaway. Why not? Well, you've caught me off guard because I don't know what we're giving away. That room is full of stuff, but I just don't like have it all in my brain inventory wise. Let's throw out the text line. 601-885-3776. Your favorite Vegas movie. Boom. Let it rip on the Ag Up Equipment text line. Now, can we get get into Mississippi State and Ole Miss baseball signing classes real quick? Yeah. I cannot believe I'm covering this, but I am. I'm going to give it a couple of minutes. Did here. you think that would happen when you first started no, the show? Hell, yeah. No, hell no. All right, so so here's where we are now with Chris Limonis. Of course, you've got a national champ. You've got two really good baseball programs. You've got one that has moved into elite status, top three, you know, whatever you want to, wherever you want to drop them, right up there now currently. It could go back and forth with uh, with Vanderbilt and who else would you throw in there, Blake? Ooh, I mean L- Mississippi State, Vanderbilt, LSU's right there, but they haven't won one since '09. Fair enough. I mean, uh, eleven, I'm, twelve I'm seasons is a long time. It is a long time. No, I'm with you. I agree. Okay. Anyway, you got a national championship baseball program, and then you've got Ole Miss that continues to knock down top five, top ten recruiting classes, and of course they live in the super regional. Um, which makes them a top 16, at least, if not better, baseball program. Um, when you look at what Chris Limonis and his staff of Jake Gotro and Scott Foxhall did yesterday, and when you look at what Mike Bianco and Lafferty and Clement did yesterday, it's unbelievable. Yep. Now, there's still a rocky road to get through next year. Got to set foot on campus. Once you do, you're there for either two years, depending on your age, or three. But uh, we seem there seems to be a a slight trend toward a lot of guys saying and parents turning down some pretty good money. Now off the charts money I get, but some pretty darn good money to say, you know what? I want my son to either knock out two years worth of one college development maturation process or three and we can go to the league or or MLB. I don't want to put my kid on a bus uh, in, in July 1st of their summer after their senior year with a bunch of 23 to 26 year olds and who knows what females and other things they're going to run into on the road. So Will, where did you tell me Ole Miss landed at number four? Yeah, so Perfect Game has Ole Miss at four and Mississippi State at six. Baseball uh, America has Mississippi State at four and Ole Miss at nine. Okay. So, yeah, so both top ten. It. Yeah. With some top five flair. Yep. That is huge. That is huge. Yeah. Uh, according to the Perfect Game rankings, and this is incredible, all right? So uh, just stay on Perfect Game. LSU, number one. Vanderbilt, number two. Louisville's three. Ole Miss four, Arkansas five, Mississippi State six. Of those top six, what what stands out to you? Five are SEC and four are SEC West. Incredible. And just to add to it, you ready? Two teams that have not been successful on the diamond as much lately but are making a push. Auburn signed the number eight class according to Perfect Game. Alabama signed the number 13 class, according to Perfect Game. Bo Hannon, who took some shots at Starkville, Mississippi, and maybe the MSU baseball program. It's a lot of SEC flavor in the top of those baseball. Here we go with Alabama and Auburn getting in the mix. Bo Hannon with the big-time class. Butch Thompson straight out of the plains with a big-time class. He was the pitching coach, as you know, for John Cohen. 
in that 2013 National Championship Series team. Good morning. Welcome in. Show is brought to you by the Char Broad Oysters at Drago's on the hill on the property of the Hilton Jackson on County Line Road. The Seafood Gumbo at Drago's Plaza Low. You're listening to the Out of Bounds Show podcast presented by Independent Roofing Systems. If you want it done right the first time, visit Independent Roofing Systems today. The button, my friend. The Out of Bounds Show is live Whoa. from the Whiskey 61 Lounge in the Bank Plus Studio. Check, check, check it out. All right. Good morning. Welcome in. Woo! We are the Out of Bounds Show. We're driven by your next Ram truck, Jeep Grand Cherokee, or Jeep Wrangler, at Mack Hike and Flowood. MacHikeFlowood.com. Ram trucks pre-owned and new. Jeep Grand Cherokees. You name it, they've got it. Mack Hike and Flowood. MacHikeFlowood.com. If you're in the market for an SUV or truck. Our guests join us on the Bell's Two-Hearted Ale guest line. We are the Out of Bounds Show, 105.9 The Zone ESPN. Dak coming off a rough, rough performance where he did not play well. We welcome in NFL senior analyst, pro football focus, PFF.com. He is Steve Palazzolo on the Out of Bounds Show. All right, Steve, what happened to Dak and the Cowboys last Sunday? I think it was just a bad game. I guess it. I think that's acceptable. It was a weird one, but there was also a point with uh, with Terrence Steele playing left tackle, Tyron Smith hurt. It did seem like Dak was a little bit more uncomfortable in the pocket, and it wasn't necessarily because there was a ton of pressure. There was a lot of pressure coming from Steele, but the rest of the line was fine. It did seem like he was a little bit uh, a little bit hesitant in the pocket, maybe holding the ball too long, or, or you know getting out of the pocket a little bit sooner than he normally would. So. Um, sometimes that happens where it's just, you know, you've got uh, discomfort based off the line around you. That's what I saw mostly from Dak. Plus, when he did, you know, he missed a bunch of throws. But then when he did make a good throw, they're, they're getting dropped. It's just one of those games where the entire offense is just off. So, I'll just say it's an off week. I'm not terribly worried about the Cowboys offense going forward. All right. What do we need to know about Cowboys Falcons for, for our Cowboys Dak fans? Steve? The Falcons are getting better, and they're good. Uh, they're good-ish. They're, uh, the Falcons are better than they have been defensively, and, and that's not saying much because they were a train wreck last year. But uh, they're a little bit better on that side of the ball. A.J. Terrell's playing a really good football corner for them. Uh, last year's first-round pick. But then offensively, Kyle Pitts is, as advertised, you know, this big, huge tight end in name who's really uh, really a wide receiver with, with a unique skill set that nobody else has around the league as far as his body control and size and everything that he brings to the table. And then they've got Cordero Patterson like nine years into his career as just this unbelievable all around threat, a legitimate wide receiver threat, a legitimate running back threat. Um, So between Cordero Patterson and Kyle Pitts, it's turned into a pretty dangerous Falcons offense with Matt Ryan uh, playing some solid football as well. Man, I don't like to hear that. All right. Cowboys Falcons uh, with an improved Falcons team. And as, uh, Steve Palazzolo says, you know, some really legit weapons with uh, Patterson, which his story is remarkable considering what all happened in college in the first few years in the NFL. And we all know about Kyle Pitts at Florida last year. You're listening Out of Bounds, 105.9 The Zone ESPN. Pro Football Focus, Steve Palazzolo, senior analyst. All right, so you feel like Dak, whether they win or not, you feel like Dak in the the offense uh, and the Cowboys will will bounce back. Let's go with Lamar Jackson tonight and Justin Tucker doing a great job with the Ravens. They just find all kinds of ways to win. They're playing the Miami Dolphins. How have you graded Lamar Jackson to date this year, Steve? Yeah, he's been good overall. Hasn't been as good as a passer, um, throw for throw wise, as he was his uh, MVP season a couple of years ago. But the volume is there, right? So a couple of years ago, he had those games where uh, he would drop back like 21, 22 times. Didn't have to do as much uh, as far as passing goes. But this year, what I've been impressed with is the, the big question with the Ravens. Could they 
could they make a comeback? Could they win through the air? And then they have. You know, they've made a few big comebacks. They've put a lot on Lamar Jackson's plate, um, always rushing the ball, but as a passer as well. So I think he's been good. He's been very good overall. Uh, had some games where they've had to just rely on his arm, and that's what's new, you know, for Baltimore. The run game isn't as productive as it's been in the past as far as down-to-down efficiency goes, but Lamar is able to uh, to carry them sometimes as far as the pass game goes. So uh, dangerous through the air more than ever, I'd say, as far as Baltimore. What about Jordan Love with the Green Bay Packers against Kansas City? He hasn't played much, if any, but he's been there for a while now. What did you see? Uh, he wasn't great. Um, I expected some bad decisions in there. I expected him to throw the ball and, you know, at defenders, put the ball in harm's way. He did that a couple times, but his just general accuracy was off. I mean, it doesn't mean he's never going to get it. It's, it's his first start, but, you know, clearly the timing of the offense was, was different, and uh, he did have open throws that he missed. The accuracy was a concern. That was one of the concerns coming out of Utah State. So, yeah, it wasn't a great start. And, and again, it's not that that's the way his entire career is going to go, but if you're – if you were coming out of that saying, man, I really want to be optimistic about a post-Aaron Rodgers world in Green Bay, I don't think you came away from that game saying, all right, we're ready. It's Jordan Love's team. I think I think it showed he still has a ways to go. What? Okay, the Chiefs didn't really score any points either. Um, you know, it, do you expect this thing to become another explosive high-flying act before January? Or do you think they kind of are what they are this year and they're going to roll kind of with what they've been? I mean, early on, I kept expecting it to revert back to what it's been. But I think the further we get away from – further away we get from their explosive offense, the more concerns I have. Um, it's it's clearly just off. And, and a lot of times when you see this, I've made the statement before, like we've never seen Patrick Mahomes play without Tyree Kill and Travis Kelsey, you know, for an extended period of time. And I always had some deep down concerns like what if those two explosive playmakers, maybe the two most difficult covers in the entire NFL, what if he didn't have those guys? Now, he still has them, but they're not necessarily I – mean, they're getting stopped. They're getting slowed down. So um, I have some concerns because they're not adjusting to what the league is doing, which is saying I'm going to take – we're going to take Tyree Kill away. We're going to take Travis Kelsey away. We're going to make you throw the ball underneath over and over and over again and you got to play a patient game, and you got to you got to make accurate throws. Everything that people would have like criticized a Tom Brady or a Drew Brees for, oh, they just they just you know hit the open throw underneath. It's easy. It's, I mean, no, that's quarterbacking. He's making you know forty good decisions a game, not three spectacular plays. So I think that's where Mahomes is struggling, and the Chiefs' offense is struggling as a whole. How do you run an offense without the explosive element that teams are taking away? So. It's they're capable, but it's it's the NFL. You have to adjust at some point, and we haven't seen the Chiefs do it, particularly over these last three or four weeks. It's so funny, Steve. As fans, we just thought it would be easy for Mahomes the next twelve to thirteen years. It's not easy for anybody I, in this league, right? I did too. I mean, I, I mean, not, not that not that anything's ever easy, right? But you just have such a high baseline that he brought to the table, and you know, there's other people who are like, oh, he was never good, and he was always reckless. Like, no, he was. The Holmes is special. Like, he has played a special brand of football his first three years as a starter. But, you know, Aaron Rodgers has not been the best quarterback in the league at every point in his career. There's points where he was. Uh, Tom Brady, I think, is the best quarterback of all time. But there's points in his career where you wouldn't say he's the best. So, I mean, it's just it's just the nature of the position and the nature of the NFL. Like, defenses watch film, too, and they have to adjust. They, they make adjustments. And uh, good quarterbacks are able to adjust and – uh, you know, you know, handle what, what the NFL is throwing at them. In your AFC power rankings. Oh, don't make me do it. Well, just tell me where the Chiefs are. <laughs> How about that? Uh, they're probably six or seven. Um, wow. But again, it's, it's, I mean, it's just like, it's, it's just where they have to be right now. But as far as the reality of what they've been and where they could go, they're probably second or third. Um, I'm just not sure. I'm not sure how much to weigh what we've seen the previous three years versus the first nine weeks this season. It's always a tough thing to figure out when does the team become what you're seeing, and when do they, you know, when do you forget what they've been? Right. So that's my cop out. I mean, re- realistically, if they ended up as the two or three seed, would anybody be surprised? I don't think so. But man, it, this offense just looks so bad over these last few weeks. Mm. 
a, a little adversity, Blake, in Kansas yeah. City with Reed and Mahomes. And as as Steve said, he's been brilliant. But uh, that doesn't mean maybe that you're going to be brilliant every single year out of 15 years. And he just referenced Tom Brady. St- uh, Steve Palazzolo, uh, senior analyst, NFL insider, pro football focus, pff.com. He joins us on the Bell's two-hearted L guest line. I, I want to go to defense and I'll go back to offense. Jeffrey Simmons, how is J- what is his grade? How is he grading off? What are you and the team seeing from Jeffrey Simmons with the Tennessee Titans? I don't have his exact grade in front of me, but he's always been one of the best, uh, highest-graded Titans defenders. Um, he doesn't dominate every week the way he did last week against the Rams, so that was nice to see in prime time. It's not necessarily what Simmons does on a week-to-week basis, though. But he was he was unbelievable in that game. Nine pressures, rushed the passer 49 times, too. So, you know, he was out there a lot. And you just saw him manhandling guards and finishing plays. And it was it was really an outstanding effort by Simmons. So uh, the Titans have really overachieved, I think, as far as what they could have what, what they should be doing defensively. And, you know, having games like that from a Simmons is uh, is a big part of that. All right. We'll go to the Saints. And. Uh, all right. So the Saints are five and three. And. You know, they're trying to figure this thing out. Sean is brilliant, I think. Uh, of course, I'm biased. But, um, I mean, do you think he's – you have him probably top three, right, in the NFL, Sean Payton? Top four? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, the track record there, and, and I think you learn a lot when you see him without a Drew Brees and what they're able to do. So, absolutely, Payton's been, been awesome. Okay, Saints at Titans. We just mentioned Jeffrey Simmons. They got some other dudes, too. To me, Vrabel is really emerging as a really good coach, too. He may not be great like Sean and Bill and, you know, some of the others, but uh, it looks like Vrabel is going to make it and do some good things in this league. Uh, Saints at the Titans. What, what, is, what can the Saints do to throw up a number to win this game? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a tough one because the, tit- the Titans are, you know, you mentioned Vrabel. The, the thing I'm most impressed about w- with them is they've had four straight tough games, and they've won all of them um, with no letdown, beating the Bills on Monday Night Football, beating the Chiefs, then the Colts in overtime, and then the Rams game last week. So Vrabel's done a good job of just keeping them on track no matter what's happening around them, defensive injuries, Derrick Henry injury. So they've been really good. As far as the Saints go, um, I was a little surprised that Trevor Simeon got the start over Taysom Hill. I did think that, you know, it seems like Peyton does like to have Taysom Hill as the, as the changeup, but I did figure with the investment that they made in him, they truly did believe in him as the quarterback. But I think it's, it's continuing that creativity. Alvin Kamara is hurt, which puts even more pressure on what the Saints can do. Uh, you know, at some point, it's a really good roster, a nice offensive line, a really good secondary, our third best defense in the league when you adjust for competition in New Orleans. But, at some point, they're just running out of guys that can make plays offensively. They don't have a great receiving core. And if Kamara is not there, it's just even more of a challenge for the Saints. So I think it's, uh, you know, creativity. It's, it's trying to get, you know, the Taysom Hill package going. It's, uh, you know, Deontay Harris getting behind the defense. It is a combination of those things where the Saints have to try to create some big plays and just kind of, you know, hold it together and, and win with defense because they're, their defense can win it, and they're they're very good. They're going to keep them in games, but it's a it's a challenging way to win games when you just don't have enough guys making plays offensively. We're talking Saints and Titans, two teams that are uh, obviously geographically close to us, and with Tennessee with AJ Brown and Jeffrey Simmons, who that just two and a half hours down the road. Uh, this is a big one. CBS Saints at the Titans this weekend. We're visiting with. NFL insider Steve Palazzolo, PFF.com. They're crushing it with great content every day. Is A.J. Brown quietly having, I mean, 40 receptions, 551 yards, three TDs? I mean, it's like he's quietly having another really good season, Steve. Yeah, and that's despite all the injuries, right? I mean, you're used to seeing... Uh, maybe a couple more of those big plays. Like you made a couple weeks ago, you you turn a 15-yard deep out into a 58-yard touchdown or whatever it was. And you're used to seeing maybe a couple more of those. But, you know, he's he's been you know, on and off the injury uh, injury report, had the, you know, in, uh, those issues and still been extremely productive. So, yeah, I mean, you know how I believe in the pass game is what dictates the NFL. So as great as Derrick Henry has been, and he has been the catalyst for a lot of what the Titans do yeah. offensively, 
to me, it still comes down to AJ, right, and Julio on the outside and Tannehill. The Titans can still be good if those guys carry the team. They certainly have what they need, and AJ Brown is a he's a true wide receiver one. Golly, he's good. Um, he and Jeffrey, unbelievable. <laughs> Grew up twenty minutes from each other, same grade, same class. Um, okay, Ryan Tannehill. What grade would you give? Is he a B, B minus, B plus, NFL QB? Where? Give me a grade. He's he's an A now. He has played like an A wow. since since taking over in 2019. I've been waiting for his regression. I'm a big believer in you know big data, right? You know, there's no way Ryan Tannehill, who's got you know seven or eight years of average NFL play, slightly above average NFL play, how did he become a high end quarterback? But that's what he's been since 2019. Now, the one little you know thing that you have to consider there is he's been in favorable situations. Teams do truly put more defenders in the box, which makes it easier to pass and all that stuff. But as far as how Tannehill is executing since 2019, taking over as a Titan starter, he's been a top five caliber quarterback. That's just how he's played. It doesn't necessarily mean you'd put him in a different system and say, okay, it's all on you, Ryan, go drop back 45 times, win the game for us. I don't know that he would do that necessarily, but as far as what Tannehill has done these last few years, he is just up there. Accuracy, decision-making, and they've created a lot of, you know, a lot of big plays, a lot of offense in Tennessee outside of just the running game with Derrick Henry. And, and you got to credit what Tannehill's done. And it comes back to Vrabel, too. Like, Vrabel's system and team and everything that they've put in place has gotten the best out of Ryan Tannehill. Okay, is Vrabel quietly, slowly emerging as what could be a really good NFL head coach for years, considering his yeah, age? He, he, he reminds me of Mike Tomlin a little bit, where I think there's just there's start you're starting to build up this body of work where it's like okay, no matter what Tennessee has, different coordinators, injuries, whatever it is, they're finding ways to win. So there's this you know, as a coach, you've got the you have so many different hats that you have to wear. There's just rallying the team and motivation and all that stuff. All of that stuff seems to show up and win. Then there's the but you can't really see what's happening behind the scenes. It seems like Brable's fine in that area. But then there's on-field decisions, and Tomlin had elements of this throughout his career, too, where they were they were going for two a lot. They had some, like, forward-looking adjustments that they were making. I think Brabel has some of that, too, when it comes to some of the clock management stuff, understanding the rules, the time and effort that they've put into um, just in-game decisions. So I think there's a lot pointing in, you know, in the positive direction when it comes to evaluating Brabel. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, it, it keeps mounting. They're set, the Titans are 7-2. and two when uh, they really shouldn't be given, you know, their schedule and, and what they've, what they've had as far as injuries this season. All right. I'm impressed with that. And I know that's exciting for, for AJ Brown and uh, Jeffrey Simmons fans that uh, the Titans are, could be headed in this direction. Very winnable game at home this weekend. If they win this weekend, Steve, they go to eight and two. Um, so that's, that's yeah. huge for, they have, so they have and so far this year, they have our fifth hardest, schedule that we've ranked as far as who they've played they have the easiest schedule going forward the titans so they have a real a real shot to, to, to get that number one seed how about that tennessee titans all right out of bounds 105.9 the zone espn we're visiting with steve palazzolo pff.com he joins us on the bells two-hearted ale guest line okay browns at the patriots so we we've got this baker thing going on we got the Patriots playing better football. Bill's just doing it. Belichick's just doing it through all three phases of the game, even though they don't have that QB, all three phases of the game. What's going on here? Uh, the Patriots have a good quarterback. It's Mac Jones. Oh! He's playing, he's playing good football, man. You've never wanted to believe in Mac Jones. Um, <laughs> they're, they're, doing a, they're doing a really nice job in New England over the last few weeks. The The Chargers win a couple of weeks ago, I thought was a huge turning point because if you look at the Patriots over the last two years, they were not winning games that they shouldn't have won. They were only winning the games that they should have won. The Jets, the Texans, you know, beating up on teams that they were just better than, but they wouldn't beat teams that uh, were better than them. And then they did it with the Chargers. That's why they're five and four and in the mix here. And people are starting to get Patriots hype. That defense is really coming together. They're doing a great job limiting the pass game. 
uh, you know, like like Belichick teams mostly do. They weren't as good in that area last year, but they, they've been much better this season. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, with the Browns, I was already – I was overreacted all this week. Oh, Baker's better without OBJ, and it's clear, and Baker was great last week and all this stuff. But that narrative could flip pretty quickly this week against the New England defense with Baker – and that passing offense, they, they're going to have to rely on the run. All their running backs are in you know, COVID protocol. So I think it's a real challenge for the Browns going into New England this week. Let's wrap it up with OBJ, Odell Beckham Jr. What is his, because we have so many talented wide receivers now, and there's more coming, what is his real value on the market, Steve? I think it depends on where he lands. I, I think a team like the Saints, who you know could use a true number one, would find a you know easier way to integrate him into the offense. Of course, on paper, that's what he would have been in Cleveland, and clearly that didn't work. I, I think I, I think receivers are extremely valuable because uh, you want to have three you want to have three legitimate pass catchers that at least the defenses have to account for. That's part of the reason why the Chiefs are struggling offensively. There's no number three. There's nobody that defenses have to account for. So if OBJ went to Kansas City. He's extremely valuable, assuming he doesn't need 10 targets a game to be happy. Uh, with Green Bay, I don't know how they would make it work if it was, you know, Devontae Adams is the guy there, and I don't think you want to take away uh, targets from Devontae Adams. But a team like New Orleans, where I think they just need any sort of playmaker help, a team like the Chiefs, where that number three option is just huge for them to get back on track, I think I think there's a lot of value for OBJ, but he's not necessarily that true number one that he looked like, you know, coming out of New York when he was with the Giants for those first few years. All right, we'll leave it there. Steve Palazzolo, great podcast, NFL Insider, PFF.com, joining us on the Bell's Two-Hearted Ale guest line. All right, man, uh, I hope you have a good weekend, and um, I can't wait to see what shakes out. That was basically a 30-ounce bone-in ribeye on the NFL. I need Dak and my Cowboys, though, to get through these uh, improved and, according to you, goodish Falcons this weekend. I hope you can make that happen. (laughs) They'll be they'll be okay this week. But right. I always appreciate it. All right, buddy. Take care. See ya. You too. Steve Palazzolo, Pro Football Focus on the Out of Bounds Show, 1059 The Zone ESPN, brought to you by Burgers, Blues, and Barbecue. I didn't forget, Blake. Burgers, Blues, and Barbecue. Main Street in Madison. Steven and the team, uh, he did a great job with that building that he took over in Madison. It's got a lot of character. It's really, really cool. Great location, Main Street in Madison. Good to see another local restaurant uh, not only come to Madison, but do well. Obviously, they're in Brandon, too. Burgers, Blues, and Barbecue serving breakfast six days a week, Monday through Saturday. We've told you about the chicken and waffles, the honey butter chicken biscuit. Obviously, they're open for lunch and dinner, too. Great burgers. Delicious burgers. Have you been recently? Yeah, get the banana pudding. It's fire. Oh, the banana pudding. It's fire. Throwing a little, I'm a throwing des- a little I'm a slaughter dessert. right on the edge of the plate there you for You know us. me. I'm a dessert guy. If, you, if you've listened to this show long enough, you realize that anytime Bo does a restaurant read, I always add what their dessert is. That's true. You yeah, do. It's because I'm a smart man. I know what brings the people in. Smash Attack Burger at Burgers, Blues, and Barbecue. They're open for breakfast. I mean, if you're feeding the office... Order a dozen, two dozen honey butter chicken biscuits. They're divine. Burgers, blues, and barbecue. Great local restaurant, Madison Brandon, now on Main Street in Madison. And uh, did a great, great job with that building. Was glad to see that that all happen. Burgers, blues, and barbecue. Um, fantastic craft beer and delicious burgers. We'll have Madison Ridgeland Academy MRA football on 105.9 The Zone ESPN. Stone Blanton choosing between Mississippi State and Ole Miss in the next few weeks. Davis Dalton committed to Southern Miss. MRA football hosting JA Friday night on 105.9 The Zone ESPN. Back in a second. 